Hi everyone, my name is Nicole and today I'm going to be sharing some teaching ideas that you can use with Padlet. Padlet allows students to share content with each other and yourself as a teacher. The free version of Padlet comes with three free Padlets and if you haven't signed up for Padlet yet, go ahead and press the link in the description box below to receive an additional Padlet. If you're interested in technology and teaching ideas, go ahead and press the subscribe button to receive more content like this. All right, let's get started. We can begin by clicking on make a Padlet. This will take us to a page which has eight different options for your Padlet style. So let's go ahead and start with a wall. That's just going to make posts that um, scatter like bricks. You can go ahead and change the title. For this, I'm just going to write ideas. The description is optional. You can choose an icon as well going to do a smiley face there. You can change the URL as well. So let's write ideas 2021. Let's go ahead and allow attribution. You can allow for comments if you'd like to comment on student work. And personally, I always do reactions as well. I do the like. You can do votes, stars and grades. Some teachers do use require approval, which allows you to manually approve the posts. However, it does take away from the live time that students post. So I'm just gonna switch that off and I will always recommend that you turn the filter profanity on as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and press next and that will save. The first teaching idea is going to be a simple brainstorm. So I'm just going to write um, brainstorm here and the task is going to be is a human being like an ecosystem? Okay, and you can put images there as well. So on Google, let's go ahead and write body. Okay, so you can add a picture. This can be a bit more visual uh, for students as well. And you can also go ahead and change the color to make it stand out if you like. Once you're finished with your task, you can go ahead and share your Padlet. There are a couple of ways to do this. The best way I've found is the QR code. So you can just copy and paste that where you need or just display it on the projector. And the other idea is just to copy the link and share it to students. Students will then be able to post their ideas. So this can be just a response. Um, and they can add things as they go, okay? And students aren't able to edit each other's work, which is very, very useful for us. You can ask students to create logins for themselves so you can see their name as they post, or you can just ask them to write their name at the bottom of their post as well. Okay, so I often do that if I'm just wanting to do this activity really quickly. The next activity is going to ask students to post images of their project. So let's go ahead to the plus sign and we're going to do task. Okay, so I always do this in steps. So one, um, upload a photo of your, let's say, science assignment. Um, you can ask them for additional information. So write one sentence about your assignment. And lastly, you can, they can type their name if they don't have a login, if they're just anonymous, okay? And you can also have an image from the internet to kind of show them how you want this to be done. So let's do science project. Okay, let's just choose this one, okay? And there it is. And then students will just come on and include their image as well. So it's really easy for students to do this on the phone. In the next activity, students will create quizzes and then post it on Padlet. They'll then go ahead and choose a couple quizzes and complete them as their own revision. So let's go ahead and press the plus sign and we'll do task. Create a quiz and multiple choice questions. Post the quiz here. Complete three um, quizzes that your friends have made, something like that. And you can also say, include your name. So the teacher knows who has posted what. A really good website to use for this is Quizzes. So straight away, students can go and click on the link and start creating their own quizzes. 
Next, we're going to take a look at Canvas. The Canvas style on Padlet allows you to create mind maps and concept maps by creating some arrows between posts. So let's say you've just started a new topic and our example is just going to be space. We can go and find some images. Okay, so here is space. All right. You can add some prompts and scaffold into the task as well. So let's go ahead and use the connectors. So we'll press on the three dots and we'll go to connect a post and then we can press connect. You can also opt to write something on the um, on the arrow as well. Okay, so here we've connected space with the Big Bang Theory and we can do that again. So connect to this post here and connect to here as well. Okay, so here we are. So you can see that when students are putting their posts onto the canvas, you can go ahead and start to connect the ideas together. You can also extend this task by allocating specific categories for groups of students, and they can do a bit more research to find out more about it and then make their posts or do some comments on the post as well. Let's go ahead and look at Stream. Stream is like a Facebook feed that has posts one after each other. So an idea that you can do with this is ask students as an exit ticket idea to create a tweet about something they've learned in class. So post a tweet about one thing that you learned in today's lesson. Okay, and you can have a bit of a prompt as well. So let's write tweet. And here we've got an image as well. Okay. So when students create posts, the posts are going to appear at the top of the feed. If you'd like the students to post um, at the bottom of the feed so that your prompt remains at the top, then just hit settings and go down to new post position and press last. Okay, so we'll press save there. And when we post now, we should be able to post just at the bottom of the prompt. Okay, so there we are. So this can be some sort of response. Next, let's take a look at the grid style. In the grid Padlet, your posts are going to be in rows. So a good use case for this is for notice boards and showcasing great work. So for example, you made a post on a specific day and you want to showcase some good work by a student. You attach a photo of their book work and you can write something about it if you like. And the next time you go and access your Padlet, you can showcase something else. So great speech by um, a person and then you can attach a little bit about that as well. So it's a really good idea just to have a class portfolio. The next Padlet is going to be using the shelf. The shelf Padlet is really good for asking students multiple questions. An example would be um, questions about a book, about a business, about their own learning as an exit ticket and so forth. So ideas could be a SWOT analysis, a KWL chart, a 3 to one exit ticket and so forth. So for this one, I'm just going to do a SWOT analysis. So what are the strengths of the product or business? Okay, what are the weaknesses? Opportunities. And lastly, what are the threats? Okay, so after you've completed these columns, students will be able to click on the plus sign and add a post that is just underneath that column. The next Padlet is going to be back channel, which just looks like communication in a chat. A good use for a back channel is to have a place where students can ask questions anonymously about the content. So what questions do you have about today's lesson? Okay, so let's go and post that and I'll post as myself. So once you share that with students, they'll be able to make posts. Here's an example of a student response and you can always go and encourage students to ask questions here if they're not so comfortable asking in class. The next Padlet is called Map and it allows you to add content onto different points on a map. Let's go ahead to the plus sign and we can search a location. For example, let's go to Mexico City and press on it and it takes us directly there. It's amazing. We can go and search for an image as well. So 
Okay, let's just take this one. And we can write a little bit of information about it as well. When we zoom out, we can see that the pinpoint stays there as well. You can see that this is very useful and we can use it in science and geography, mapping volcanoes and earthquakes. You could be using for social studies, looking at trade routes and the routes of explorers. Um, you could also be looking at significant places around the world, for example, the um, wonders of the world and writing information about that as well. The next Padlet we're going to be looking at is called Timeline. Using the Timeline Padlet, students can go ahead and create posts about specific events that have occurred. For example, they might be looking at the Jurassic period and the Triassic period, and they can go and do some research on it and find images as well. A great place to get inspiration for your Padlet is the Padlet Gallery, which showcases work from different people. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's already here in the Padlet Gallery. So let's take a look at the life cycle of a butterfly. Okay, so it uses a timeline padlet. You've got mapping the tallest buildings in the world. Okay. We've also got a KWL for drafts. So what we know, what we want to know and what we've learned. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a comment below to let me know what your favorite Padlet activity is. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on new videos. If you are interested in learning more about teaching with technology, you can go ahead and check out some of my other videos, which are about some of the technologies that teachers are using today. Until next time, see you later and have a good day. Bye.